Let us turn our eyes towards heaven as the men of their God's own heart, prophet David. He was telling us in Psalm 121 that our eyes of our heart will be continually gazing upon the Lord. And David was saying in Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, to the mountain of the Lord. From where comes from my help? My help comes from Yahweh, who made heaven and the earth. I will not allow your foot to be moved. You are unmovable. He who keeps you will not slumber. He will not sleep. He will preserve you and protect you. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Yahweh is my keeper, my watchman, protector. Yahweh is the shade at my right hand. In other words, he is my defend. The sun shall not struck you by day, nor the moon by night. Yahweh shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Yahweh shall preserve your going out and your coming in. In from this time forth and even forevermore. As we are living in this time with signs of second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are surrounded with all those signs that that Bible is talking about. When you look into the olive tree, olive tree always representing the nation of Israel and when we see this what we can we can exactly uh, put the Word of God the scriptures as a, our guarding line or as our news good news and a true news you know in this time of uh, wars and rumors of wars now actually we are in the time of war like east of Europe uh, stirring up the prophecy that Gog and Magog and Ezekiel 48 and 49 prophecy that Russian bear being wake up this giant being awake and is thirsty for the blood and flexing his muscles against the uh, uh, innocent sheep nation. The wolf was coming out from the caves, from the forests, the seeking for the sheep, the blood of the sheep. We must keep our eyes of our heart continually enlightening on the word of the prophecy, on the word of the Lord, on the promises of God because none of his word will return to him void. We must remember that the events doesn't change us, doesn't change our standing, even though it changed our priority. But Elohim has created everything by the power of his word and he withholding everything by the word. And this is one of the, the coming of the Lord Jesus now one of the signs is, is now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, Jesus was teaching his disciples opposite the temple. The disciples, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, come to him and ask privately, Teacher, tell us what will be this, when these things will be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age when all these things will be fulfilled? This is what Matthew 24, verse 3, was talking about Jesus. Jesus, as the Word of God, He knows the beginning and the end, and He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
That is why our emotions must come in out of the Word of God and our action, even though many of our loved ones has been deprived of the homes they lost overnight, all that they has been working for. And, um, and including the loved ones in the family, there was a separation because the war has been breaking in. And that's the resort. And yet, uh, they may take our bodies, but they cannot take our hope. You know, they may take our confidence uh, in the material things, but they cannot take our hope with us because our hope is living hope. It's coming from the Word of God. So, you know, now we are in this deception of uh, rising up and running because this first seal, which is deception in Revelation chapter 6, was broken. So now we can see the false media deception is running through. 99.9% .9 of is a false uh, a media, false news, miscommunication, deceptions, some of the clips that has been taken some three years back from other wars and put into that situation for, to the deceived people. So, beloved, as I was prophesying earlier about this uh, uh, first point that I shared last year and the beginning of this year, divine communication. I want you to stay with strong divine communication that you will not be deceived because the, the ruler of this world the father of lies, seeking who he may devour and deceive, even if it's possible, both the elect ones, the chosen ones, the leadership. When he deceived the leadership, the sheep will be scattered and it will be an easy target for the prey. So I want you to stay tuned to the truth and, and uh, love the truth, uh, embrace the truth. Uh, uh, meditate on the truth because the truth is Christ Jesus. Defend the truth and be ready to stand on the truth even to the point of death. Because as you knowing the truth, you're standing in the truth, you will be victorious because Christ has overcome and you will overcome over truth because the truth is standing on their own. Truth don't need to defend themselves. It stands throughout the ages and throughout the centuries. The truth is stronger because the truth is Christ. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, or many false prophets will arise. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord, they will say, I am he, the Christ, and the time has drawn near and will deceive many. Therefore do not go after them. Forget about them. Matthew 24, from verse 4 to 5. Have inner witness in your spirit, have inner uh, confidence in your spirit and peace that the information and the truth you receive either has to witness with your spirit. And if you doesn't witness in your spirit, you just brush it off. That is why very important for us to continually uh, put uh, and stay put that on the helmet of our salvation and captive every thought and information that's coming in, bring to the Word of God, bring to the blood of Jesus. If you everything is filtered through the blood of Jesus Christ, in your mind, in your thoughts, you will stand, you will not be deceived, because you overcome, and you will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The blood is a powerful weapon of Christ and the word of our testimony. What the blood of Christ has done for us, and we don't love our lives until death. So, wars and rumors of war, now... It's all, all over the news. And when you hear of wars, you know, I come from Poland and now we're hearing not only of rumors of war, but now we are hearing the sound of wars. Uh, uh, my family says that uh, continually that over our heads are flying, are flying uh, the heads of uh, the air, uh, airplanes and the supply is going to the borders and uh, new armies are coming as well uh, preparing for the uh, uh, to strengthen the our neighbors because we've choose and our leader thank god for our leader of poland that he choose to be not deceived and uh, he was saying one very interesting thing that um, 
that you can find it in the news that this ancient spirit that was sleeping since 1945 when the World War II was ended was awakened now, those evil spirits of war. So be on guard and uh, stand on the truth. And when you hear of wars, commotions and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, do not be terrified. For all these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. This is the beginning of the end. Rumors and rumors of war and wars. And after wars will come famine. This is what your ethnic groups, ethnic being rise up and fight against each other. Different tribes begin to fight against each other. Begin to uh, be people, uh, be more, um, uh, 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 more sensitive, more uh, less loving one another, begin to possessing someone land and take advantage of someone, begin to moving the, the land boundaries in order to steal and kill uh, and rob someone's land and coming uh, and uh, possessing someone land uh, uh, by, uh, by, uh, 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 by just covetousness and greed. And uh, be aware of those things because this Bible already says, Then he said to them, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be a great earthquake in various places, and famines, troubles, and pestilence. And there will be fearful signs and great sign from heaven. That was Ma Matthew 24, 7. All these are the beginning of sorrow. We are just enter on 22nd February 22. We have been just entered into Shemitah, which is the period of the seven years of, uh, of judgment, uh, awards, and at the same time for those who have seeking God, the hearts of the backsliders are turning to the Lord. That now it's like all over we hear testimonies upon testimonies of the people that suddenly the spirit will awaken and begin to turn to the Lord and to the Bible and begin to dive into the scriptures because the spirit of Elijah at the same time being pouring out. The false prophets rising up performing deception but at the same time true prophets with the spirit of Christ and the spirit and the power of Elijah that cause the hearts of the children turn back to God because the heart of the father already has turned 2020 years ago through the blood of his cross of his beloved son Jesus Christ the Messiah persecutions are coming and it's stirring. We have seen ISIS, we have seen Middle East, but we didn't see yet in the West persecution coming. You know, West has been sitting in the boundaries and sitting in the benches and just observe all what's happening because personally they were not affected. But so there is not much compassion. There is not much love. But when the persecution are at the door, of the very communities, Western communities, because they believe in Christ, because they have a testimony of Jesus Christ, because they believe the cross, the power of the blood of Christ, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension to heaven and coming again, there will be spirit of Antichrist that will rise up against the spirit of Christ in the Western nations and all the Christians. But watch out! Therefore, all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, deliver you up to the counselor, and you will be betrayed in the synagogues or in the churches. You will be put in prison, deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be brought before kings and rulers for many, for my name's sake. Remember, they don't love the lives unto death. Revelation chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 11, the last part. But it will turn out for you as a causation, a occasion for, uh, for testimony. Just like Jesus says in Matthew 24, 9. And also Paul the Apostle, he was 
facing persecution, but he was not deprived of having trial even before kings and Caesars. And he was testifying uh, uh, of his faith in the Messiah, that he met the Messiah on the way to Damascus, that the Messiah met him and transformed his life, even though he was counting as a chief of the sinners, but yet also as a chief of the apostle by the grace of God. And when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand, Set, uh, settle in your heart, not be premeditate on what you will speak or what you will answer. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak, that, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom uh, with which all your adversaries will not be able to, to contradict or resist you. You know, uh, Mark 13, 11. So be, be continually, let us stay filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we stay filled with the Holy Spirit, we will be always ready to testify of the goodness and the hope that is set before us. You know, there is lots of betrayal taking place in the families now, which is one of the signs of Jesus coming. Children will rise against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all men for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head will be lost. In your patience possess your soul. So be patient, which is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is waiting upon the Lord is to develop patience. One of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 onwards is a fruit of patience. Through faith and patience we obtain our promises. So as we have that fruit of patience developing in us, we possessing our soul. We don't acting, uh, um, we don't acting rationally. We are being still and know that He is Elohim, and He will be exalted and glorified among the nations. Psalm 46 verse 10. Uh, we know also that one of those greatest signs that it's also the love of many will grow cold. People are. Uh, are more or less and less care of the hurting uh, uh, someone as long as doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't hurting them or the loved ones but if you they see someone else in different nations the the heart is very passive and uh, that's a sign one of the sign of the our love growing cold if you were looking just and viewing that people are suffering and they have a needs and any possible mean we can release and pray and fasting for these people to intercede and give up our food to give to someone else and and give up our meal when we have a free meal give up one meal at least per day of your family to someone else who are suffering now and that's a sign that your heart is being warm up that you're not growing cold that you your love is prolonged that you caring that's a sign and because of lawlessness, iniquity will abound, and the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. So continually, in order to keep our heart in love, we must uh, move not only our heart, but also our hand. It is it's what was spiritual and physical to help those who are in need. Hallelujah. Yes. And then, of course, this greatest... Uh, uh, personally, the, that I that is burning in my bones, that the greatest sign is the gospel of the kingdom that has to go forth. No more gospel of denominationalism and all those doctrines, but purely the gospel of the kingdom. Because this is what Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 14. He says, "And this gospel of the kingdom must first be preached in all the world." as a witness to all nations and then the end will come the gospel of the kingdom must be preached that's the sign 
of the end time. That when the gospel is preached and the knowledge of the gospel sweeping through as a water cover the sea, then Yeshua will come, Messiah. And we know that the kingdom of God is not merely a natural eating and drinking, but of righteousness and joy and peace. The kingdom of God is not in your tradition, it's not in your uh, 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 denominationalism, but it's in the Holy Spirit. That is why it is impossible for the one to be born again and enter to the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. The flesh giving birth to flesh, but the Spirit giving ver uh, uh, birth to the Spirit. When this is, must be a supernatural transforming of the hearts and, and, and the minds and the Spirit that coming and live in us, that we can see the kingdom and we can enter into the kingdom being born again of the Spirit of God. And the every citizen, every disciple of the kingdom cannot be deceived because the Spirit of Christ dwelling inside of us and navigating us and leading us towards all the truth. And from that moment, we know there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are walking according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. So now be led by the Holy Spirit by day like a cloud, cloud that's giving shade and, and cooling us down when it's a hot weather, but by night as a pillar of fire that warming us when there is a cold weather and also with the twofold manifestation and the purpose of the pillar of fire is to keep the beast away, to keep the wolves away, to keep the deceiver away, and at the same time keep us warm and protected and sheltered and giving us light, hallelujah, light in the land of Goshen. When the people dwell in darkness like in Egypt, there was a light in Goshen, hallelujah, let the household have a light. Blessed be the name of the Lord as we're returning to the book of Acts that every house now is being lighting up as from house to house they went and they preach the gospel and they share everything what they have and they have everything in common. Blessed be the name of God. You know, lots of uh, uh, is preparation now in Middle East as well. We see the, the, the uh, Gok and uh, Gok uh, uh, having his presence in Syria there, in the northern border of Israel. That's a sign as well of abomination and desolation in Jerusalem. We can read about it in uh, Matthew 24, uh, Luke, Luke as well, 21, 24, and uh, Matthew 24 from 15 to 18. But when you see Jerusalem surrounding by the armies, you will see 100 million strong soldiers being in, uh, placed at Gok, uh, Gok at Magok, uh, Megiddo. You will see that. Very, very, very Ezekiel. You can read about it as well, Ezekiel 38 and 39. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that is desolation is near. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let